Good morning, everybody, and welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Saturday, April 25th. Happy Easter to you, and uh, this is the 2020 Catholic Brothers for Christ Virtual Men's Conference. We are in for a couple of exciting and informative and inspiring hours for you. Thank you for joining us. We are broadcasting today on the CatholicBrothersForChrist.com website on Facebook and YouTube. Hopefully many of you are watching uh, right now. My name is Dave Palmer. I'm serving as the MC of this event. I am joined in studio here at KTH 910 AM where we're broadcasting live this morning with the leadership team of the Catholic Brothers for Christ. Uh, they are uh, Jeremy Stevens, who is the chairman of the 2020 Men's Conference. Rick Self is the president of the Catholic Brothers for Christ. Bob Duane, vice president of the Catholic Brothers for Christ. And also, we have our videographer and our uh, webmaster photographer, Ralph Zaransky. No event would be complete without Ralph here, and he does an outstanding job, and all this is going to be available on video uh, afterwards. We're also broadcasting here live on the radio, KTH 910 AM. We welcome you. We thank you so much uh, for being a part of this. Uh, wherever you're watching or listening this morning. The theme of this conference is Come to the Table Where Grace Begins. And uh, we have an outstanding keynote speaker who's going to be doing most of the heavy lifting, so to speak, uh, during these next two hours. You're probably very familiar with uh, the dynamic deacon, Deacon Harold Burke Sivers. He is our keynote speaker. And what he's going to be doing this morning is just uh, amazingly powerful. First of all, he is live. This is not pre-recorded, okay? So Deacon Harold Brooks Sivers is live with us this morning from the Chapel of Immaculate Heart of Mary Parish in Portland, Oregon. And uh, just a minute, we're going to uh, go live to Deacon Harold. And again, if you're watching it, you'll be able to see him. If you're listening to the radio, you'll be able to hear him. He is going to give an adoration reflection called A Man After God's Own Heart, The Spiritual Power of the Rosary. Then Deacon Harold is going to lead us in the Rosary, uh, a set of mysteries, I believe the joyful set of mysteries. And then after that, he's going to go straight into his keynote presentation. And the theme, uh, of course, Come to the Table Where Grace Begins. He will be speaking today about living every day with a Eucharistic heart, focusing on Luke chapter 22. Okay, so that is what you're in store for. Then we'll come back to the studio and we've got some wrap-up announcements and we'll talk to the leadership team here of the Catholic Brothers for Christ. So that is what is in store over the next couple of hours and whether you're listening or watching, again, the uh, website, if you're listening to us and you'd rather see us, go to the website catholicbrothersforchrist.com and you can click on the YouTube or the Facebook page and you can see all of us behind the scenes or you can listen to us on the radio. Either way is uh, amazing and outstanding. So welcome Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thanks for being with us. I want to go straight to the leadership team. These are the guys that put all this together and uh, so happy for them to be doing this for many, many years now. And uh, first I want to uh, uh, welcome Rick Self, uh, again the president of the Catholic Brothers for Christ. And uh, Rick, needless to say, we're all aware over the last couple of months uh, we are living in challenging times and that has certainly played into the way that y'all have been preparing and putting on this conference uh, today. Well, good morning, good people. Uh, again, thanks Dave and all the GRN for letting us be here today. It's a wonderful opportunity for us. You know, what's going on in the, the readings uh, the last couple of weeks after Easter is the apostles are, are up and, you know, they're kind of in fear of, of being, uh, you know, the Romans coming after them or whatever. And, and there's a lot of, but, the, but Peter and the disciples aren't afraid. They go out and they actually preach in the, in the, in the temple. They get thrown in jail. They go back and they do the same thing again after the you know the angel. So we're in fearful times right now with this pandemic, and uh, so we've had to kind of improvise. Which Father R Ronald, our our associate pastor at Good Shepherd, says, you know, we have to improvise. That's why we had we've had virtual mass and things like that. So that's what we're doing here today. Uh, we're not in fear. We w we want to keep our faith alive, and and so that's why we're doing this conference, and hopefully. Uh, you can spread the news to others as well to go to our websites and watch us live. I um, also want to bring to your attention, if you do go to our website, there's a prayer request. So if you have a prayer during this two-hour conference that you want us to, to pray for, and we'll do this today as well as throughout the year, go to that prayer request. It's on the top right-hand side of the website. and Just hit that and, and it'll email that prayer request to us. Uh, so please do that, um, and you can do that anytime. And again, I want to thank everybody at the at the Guadalupe radio station, Diane, uh, Dave, Cecil, um, 
and Joe McLean for all the help. They set this up. We did this in record time. And we, <laughs> we uh, you know, our live conference was canceled. And we had to do this in a very quick time, and and we're not by any means professional. I'm not anyway doing this, and they've done a, a fantastic job doing that. Last thing I want to talk about is just uh, you know, in this time of pandemic, we have new uh, ways of of spiritual habits. You know, we have new ways of prayer. We have. I'm just going to say you need to try to be in contact with your brothers out there. Try to do Zoom calls or whatever that may be to stay in contact. And we've got to just, you know, we got to make ourselves stay strong in the faith by pr pray, pray, pray. Uh, Jeremy Stevens, as I mentioned before, chairman of the 2020 Men's Conference, the guy that put it all together. And Jeremy, maybe you can explain a little bit more about the necessity and even maybe some of the benefits of going virtual and why we had to do this. You know, uh, it's, it's really interesting because I, I got to put on two conferences and only one of them actually pulled off. Because <laughs> yeah, we put all the planning together. We had everything lined up. We had our meal planned, everything for the real uh, live conference there in uh, Frisco. And then yeah, a month ago we have said, oh, we can't do that. And uh, so we went really quickly. We transitioned into a live, uh, a live virtual conference, not, not something recorded. We wanted to make sure that we were still having that live interaction for guys out there so that they're all together. I mean, that's one of the big keys of getting together. And that's what we did. You know, Rick mentioned the uh, prayer requests. And so that's one thing that I really like that we're always able to do because that is included in our morning leadership prayer team. Every morning we get an email uh, to pray together. And so we're still staying connected that way. And that was what was important for this was to stay connected and be here uh, with our guys out there, getting them all together. I'm, I'm really disappointed that we can't be together. You know, one of the greatest things we hear every year is the priests that come out and they tell us about men that haven't been to confession in a long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's something we're missing. But it's really nice to, you know, be able to still get together, be able to take all those prayer requests, know that we're praying for each other, get together virtually. I've been, you know, I've seen these guys a few different times on, on Zoom calls as we get together and pray together in the morning. So it's really a great opportunity to still have that. Lots of guys still getting together virtually we're seeing and we're able to help out uh, with a lot of the different tools that we have that we've learned over three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, so, but you know, we, we always have many other things that are going on regularly, like our, our, our t-shirts that we do. Uh, we actually have a t-shirt for this year's conference as well. We've got a, a special, uh, uh, the Catholic T-Shirt Club has done T-shirts for us for several years. So one day only, we've got a T-shirt on our website. Go to catholicbrothersforchrist.com. You can get this year's conference T-shirt. Uh, uh, Father uh, Padre Pio, St. Padre Pio says, you know, pray, hope, and don't worry. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need to do right now. We need to continue to pray. We need to continue to hope. We've been to hoping a lot about this conference. <laughs> and uh, don't worry. We're working on that third part yet. But. <laughs> Also, just want to say, if you are on the website, CatholicBrothersForChrist.com, or if you can get there on the YouTube or Facebook page, you'll see that Dying Xavier is uh, putting some slides up. So you can see what the shirt looks like. You can see the logo. You can see St. Padre Pio there with that T-shirt. So a lot of good visuals as well. So it's all going very well. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Jeremy, Stephen. This is uh, one event that is really part of a much broader movement, something that's been going on for over a decade now, a movement of bringing men closer to Christ. Maybe you can talk about the overall purpose, uh, goal, and uh, reason for the Catholic Brothers for Christ in these conferences. Well, Dave, thank you. <coughs> the, uh, we started out, and Joey started this whole thing, so a shout out to him. And we wouldn't have it if this wasn't happening, but it started as he was challenged uh, and I built a conference, and, and it's grown every year. We had record attendance last year. We were so excited about what was going to happen this year. God knew and and uh, provided this and we thank you for that but Catholic Brothers for Christ is not a conference we put on a conference we're a movement and our goal is to get Catholic men to be strong spiritual leaders of the, their family and especially right now where people aren't going to mass because they can't go to mass I read this morning three dioceses open have opened up for mass and that it will be soon Lubbock has I don't know mm -hmm. if you saw that but, yeah I did um, you know we'll be back together and we want to make sure that as men, that we're the spiritual leaders of the family, that we don't, that we're the first ones there, and that we're leading our family. So we, the whole 
uh, purpose of a movement is not just to have a conference once or twice a year, but to make sure in the parishes people are, uh, men are getting together and they're building bonds and they're holding themselves accountable and they're growing. And we've got lots of resources and lots of programs and we've seen parishes all over North Texas in three different dioceses all start men's groups and they start out with three or four people and then they grow and they get up to 80 or 90 and uh, they keep growing. So our goal is to help be the resources and we come together a couple times a year but our real objective is for men to be spiritual leaders and stand up and be strong Catholic men. Mm -hmm. One of the neat things about uh, this conference as we've said obviously the men's conference is for men it's men 18 and older but when it's virtual like this you got a lot of the, the wives and uh, you know who may be tuning in or the the daughters and so the the women kind of get to see behind the scenes so we welcome everybody who's listening to us or, or watching this. The theme was something we pray about every year and uh, we've been praying about it uh, right after we got through with last year's conference and looking at where we were continuing in the, the challenges that we've had and realizing that so many people that are professed Catholics that don't really understand the real presence of the Eucharist and so that was our original theme for the conference and and will be our theme for next year's live in-person event we're gonna mm -hmm. do this we're gonna be persistent but uh, you know we wanted to continue that theme with what we were doing for our virtual theme too and it's it's so difficult because we can't get to adoration like we were just talking about you know uh, I, I, I miss my time I miss mm -hmm. my time yeah. sitting there with our Lord and you know that's that's what we wanted to continue doing was talking about that and helping people in that strengthen in that and remember that and so we're able to reach a lot more people than we would have being in person uh, with just 1500 guys and you know there's nothing more powerful than hearing the dynamic deacon talking in the morning so like you say you know early in the morning on uh, uh, the, the radio station get up early it's challenging with my no commute to make sure I'm still listening mm -hmm. at the right time but you know he's he's got that powerful talk about and understanding and able to bring to us the power of the Eucharist. Yes. Yeah, I was just thinking about that. Many of us wake up with the dynamic deacon every morning because he is, along with Gloria Purvis and Monsignor Charles Pope, the hosts of Morning Glory, which is uh, run across the Guadalupe Radio Network every uh, morning during the week, uh, during the 6 o'clock hour. And now you might sleep in a little later on weekends and you're waking up with him again today. So that's <laughs> hopefully you've been up for a while. But uh, thank you so much. Again, I want to thank the leadership team of uh, Jeremy Stevens, Rick Self, Bob Duane, Ralph Saransky, uh, for putting this on, Deacon Harold Burke Sivers is serving as our keynote speaker for this men's conference today. He is live at the Immaculate Heart of Mary Parish in Portland, Oregon. And just a reminder as we go to him now, uh, he is going to be leading us in an adoration reflection. Uh, it is titled, A Man After God's Own Heart, The Spiritual Power of the Rosary. And then he's going to be going immediately into his keynote address. And this is called, Living Every Day with a Eucharistic Heart. A reflection on Luke 22.